Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for coming. Happy New Year. My name is Ed Riskin. I'm the Director of Transportation here in San Francisco, and happy to be kicking off the, the new year, uh, I think, with some good news for San Francisco. San Francisco has always been a dynamic city. I actually, during the break, was re reading another history of Muni and reading about how things have, have changed over the years and required the city to evolve. And right now, we're in a period where there's a lot of innovative things, a lot of change, including in our transportation system. A lot of that change is good change, uh, but it's change that we need to manage and make sure that it's safe and that it's consistent with the city's policies, such as the city's transit first policy. And we're, we're here to talk about something uh, like that here today. Uh, we've got a, a lot of great partners who are joining us in this, partners from commercial transportation, uh, from the private sector companies that, that they service. The Bay Area Council has been a great leader and a convener, as well as our, our partners here in the city. Um, I think uh, you'll hear fr from the mayor and the other speakers uh, that we're really uh, confronting this issue head on uh, and really going to address uh, something that's bringing a lot of benefits to San Francisco and do it in a way so that we continue to realize those benefits uh, while addressing uh, any of the issues that, that this new uh, service, the, the corporate employee shuttles, are bringing. So without further ado, happy to bring up our leader, Mayor Ed Lee. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Well, Happy New Year, everybody, and uh, I want to thank Board President David Chu and Supervisor uh, Scott Weiner for joining us, uh, two uh, great advocates on our board for uh, better and improved transportation. I want to thank the SFMTA. Uh, Tom Nolan's here as president of the commission, as well as his staff, uh, Tilly Chang from the Transportation Authority. Thank you for being here as well, because uh, you're part of helping to figure all this out, too. And uh, I want to thank the Bay Area Council. Jim Wonderman's been a, a great uh, attribute to us, uh, not only here in the whole Bay Area, as we work out our transportation challenges in the city, uh, that we don't do it alone, and that uh, it is better uh, to start up that conversation with uh, the corporations that our employees and our residents are going to, uh, to figure it out better, uh, working with the uh, commuter uh, shuttle companies as well as the companies that are hiring our SF residents. It's a great opportunity to talk about this because uh, guess what? Our uh, transportation needs are great and we reflected that in I think a very serious document that we recently released, the Transportation 2030 document that uh, Ed Riskin and so many other people, uh, Gabe Metcalf and Spur and others, contributed so much uh, to visioning our transportation needs. Well, today we're talking about a, a challenge, uh, something that's uh, kind of a recent phenomenon, but uh, been uh, very much in the eyes of many people, and that is the commuter shuttles that have been appearing all across uh, parts of our city that have been taking uh, residents and uh, others to their jobs. And be it uh, a uh, Silicon Valley company or a medical campus uh, or a university, uh, the shuttles are here and they've been helpful in that. Uh, uh, but for them, possibly we could see some 45,000 additional vehicle uh, miles uh, on our roadways or some 11,000 tons of carbon emissions on our streets, but for these shuttles. So they have become an invaluable source uh, for us, and I support the fact that uh, employers are trying to figure out ways in which uh, their employees can get to work efficiently, safely. Uh, but up to this time, the city was kind of letting that happen, uh, somewhat uncoordinated, uh, happenstance, if you will, whether it was in our muni zones or uh, on certain uh, uh, very visible, very busy streets of our city. Having said that, uh, we wanted to make a coordinated effort to uh, capture in more information, uh, to work with the companies whose employees are on these buses, to work with the shuttle companies themselves that are permitted by the CPUC to operate on our streets, work with them uh, at a higher level of coordination uh, because happenstance would then uh, get you into potentially causing delays in Muni having conflicts in these Muni zones, uh, potentially also causing problems for bicyclists who are in the lanes or causing buses to stop in the transport lanes uh, without knowledge uh, and without coordination. Uh, I know that the, the more recent voices have been identifying 
these for purposes of uh, political agendas and, and rhetoric. And I want to say that uh, the commuter shuttles have been of benefit. Uh, although they're symbolic of other things that perhaps people are angry about, uh, I think they provide a good service. And I know that our transportation experts and people in the city see this as a contribution to preventing more congestion on our streets. So today we're here to announce uh, an agreement between the city uh, with the participation of the companies, uh, the Bay Area Council and encouraging that to happen and want to thank them and the corporate leaders here today and the shuttle uh, companies ownership here announce an agreement that uh, for the next 18 months uh, we will have an agreed upon approach to the use of uh, our muni zones appropriately uh, with uh, a shared uh, use uh, of these uh, commuter shuttles uh, in those zones. And we're going to focus on about 200 of these zones out of the 2,500 uh, muni zones that we have in the city. And these are the ones that uh, we have studied uh, for the past year and a half as to where I think the bulk of the uh, uh, pickups are had. And we're going to coordinate uh, this and also uh, have the cost recovery. It'll be uh, an agreement that reflects about $100,000 a year for the use of these uh, uh, muni zones. But it'll also signal an identification uh, of the people using it. Uh, they'll have to have some permission to use these zones. Uh, it'll also have rules that uh, Ed Riskin will go into a little more detail, but they're rules such as respecting the muni lines uh, and the muni buses, making sure that certain rules uh, there are abided by uh, for the commuter shuttles so that uh, they're not in the way of our uh, muni lines and also causing any further congestion or uh, shock to the system. And we're going to evolve this in a better way, but we wanted to signal an agreement on an approach uh, that will have a set of rules have these uh, commuter shuttles identified appropriately with signage that lets uh, everybody know they're there uh, in approved basis, uh, and also a set of rules that uh, suggest that they'll be there in a coordinated fashion at times of the hours and places uh, where they'll respect the other multiple modes of transportation that we want to have in the city. Uh, we think that with this coordinated approach, uh, we'll receive better data for our SFMTA to consider for future improvements. Uh, we'll have a ground uh, kind of foundation to talk with the shuttle services uh, that are provided with the, with the actual companies there. And we'll have some good data to share with our companies about uh, the practices of their employees and uh, where the best pickup times are and how they will uh, add value to a more efficient, uh, more effective, and more safe a transportation system. This is the purpose of today's announcement, is to begin this coordination, uh, but also to get a little bit of cost recovery on it uh, with that agreement, but also to signal that we want to do it well and do it right, and that means better uh, collaboration with all the companies that are using uh, the municipal zones uh, for picking up their employees. And uh, I think that this will lead to uh, even better uh, situation where uh, if it could get literally out of hand if we just didn't have the kind of coordination and discussion and dialogue that we should be having. Uh, so this is a signal to everybody that uh, I think uh, shuttles are here to stay, but they've got to be coordinated and better uh, uh, aligned with our municipal uh, system, uh, and that uh, we do need further study. Uh, and we've studied it. I know there was a strategic study that was done by the TA in 2011, and we're building upon that. Uh, but there's been a proliferation in the last uh, two and a half years as well. Uh, we have some 400 different uh, shuttle companies that are exist in the city. And uh, we didn't know uh, up until now, uh, and I think we're still learning, where all their routes are, how many people they pick up, and what are the safest practices that they could be abiding by with us. So this is a start, if you will, of a coordinating body. And I want to, again, thank the SFMTA, the Bay Area Council, for working closely together as we start this coordination. Uh, it may not be enough, fast enough for everybody, but I think we need to do this in a very uh, solid way with some good communications that 
we expect to have with uh, companies from uh, Microsoft to Google to uh, uh, Xbox and uh, all the other companies that we're working with uh, where their employees uh, are, are going south and coming back uh, and to coordinate the schedules and the time frames and to make sure everybody's safe and, and efficient. And there are, there are numbers of companies. It isn't just these ones that we've announced. There are many other companies. There are hospital campuses. There are university campuses that use uh, these shuttle services. And we want them to be coordinated better. Uh, we also want them to make sure they're talking with us about that information that we need to improve uh, the system for everyone. Ultimately, the goal should be the same. We're trying to get people to work. That's the practical part of it, trying to get them back from work, uh, trying to make sure that there isn't cross-purposes on issues of safety and efficiencies for our muni system. Um, and I think uh, we're going to be better at it, and uh, I think with this uh, newly found foundation in uh, good collaboration with all of the different companies, we'll get better at it as uh, time comes along. Um, I know there's a lot of questions about this, and we'll be glad to answer it, but we wanted everybody to have a chance to talk about this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So uh, I, I didn't mention it at the start, but you're standing in the Muni Line Management Center, and the men and women who work here uh, 24 hours a day are charged with making sure that the Muni vehicles can, can get through the streets uh, of San Francisco uh, as efficiently as possible. Um, that's uh, part of what we need to do in order to advance the Transit First policy that was adopted by the Board of Supervisors way back in 1973. Uh, that Transit First policy is now in the charter, was placed there by the voters of San Francisco, and it is the charge of the SFMTA and its Board of Directors to implement that policy. The framework that we're talking about here today, which would be a permitting system uh, for these employee shuttles, is something that is subject to approval by the SFMTA Board of Directors. We've been working on this uh, idea uh, with, the, with the private sector for the last couple of years after the, the good work done by the Transportation Authority in 2011. Uh, we now have a, a proposal finalized that we'll be bringing to the MTA Board on January 21st. We have, however, been uh, keeping them updated along the way. We, a couple months ago, or uh, maybe three or four months ago, went to our Policy and Governance Committee uh, to provide uh, some opportunity for public comment as well as board comment. Ultimately, it'll be the Board of Directors that will determine the, the next steps of this. And again, th their focus will be to make sure that we are advancing the, the Transit First policy in, in anything we do. And, and I'll, I'll just note that while Muni is by far the largest transit provider in the Bay Area, our ridership is, is nearly equal to all of the other transit agencies in the region combined. If you look at the collective ridership uh, of the employee shuttles, uh, they're equivalent to about a mid-sized transit agency in the Bay Area. So a pretty, they've become a pretty significant part of bringing transit to the Bay Area in a way that I think complements uh, what the public transit agencies are doing. Uh, but the, the hard choices on this will all be at the feet of the MTA Board of Directors. I'm pleased to welcome up the chairman of the board, Tom Nolan. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a good feeling about the vote on the 21st, Director Riskin, uh, because we have been kept informed about this all the way. The, one of the main goals of the MTA is really to shift uh, modes of transportation in San Francisco, to get more and more people on public transit, getting around bikes, walking, uh, all the other kinds of things, and this is an important step forward in that regard. So we're very pleased to be part of this and look forward to a positive vote and working with these fine companies and continuing working with the Bay Area Council under Jim Wonderman. And uh, this is going to be, I think, a huge help. 45,000 people is not inconsiderable when you think about it on a daily basis. And I think this is a large, big step forward uh, for the entire city, the SFMTA. Thank you. So the, the people who are elected by the people of San Francisco to represent them have, have been somewhat on the front lines of some of the concerns uh, about the shuttles, about their impacts on the neighborhoods, their impacts on the transit system. And we're very fortunate to have great leadership at City Hall uh, on the Board of Supervisors, on the Transportation Authority Commission, um, who are, have been uh, working with us, who have been sharing their feedback, uh, giving us their input, uh, and really bringing leadership to all of what we're doing in transportation in San Francisco, 
uh, not the least of which is this issue. So very pleased to be joined today by the President of the Board of Supervisors, David Chu. Thank you, Ed, and I want to take a moment and thank all the men and women behind me who have helped to address uh, a series of headaches, frankly, for many of the neighborhoods within my district, I know within Supervisor Wiener's district, throughout the city. In recent years, we have seen a wild, wild west on our streets, and this is an important first step at bringing some more order and rules to our roads, as well as asking our companies to pay a fair share of what it costs the city to maintain our streets. Uh, the fact of the matter is the men and women here behind us have spent the better part of a year really thinking creatively, uh, intelligently, and based on facts what rules we need to make sure that we're minimizing congestion on our streets, uh, we're maximizing the ability uh, of folks not to have to travel in private cars uh, and to get on uh, vehicles where uh, multiple people are being carried, uh, and also to make sure that our city infrastructure, when it comes to our bus stops and our roads, are also being properly maintained. And I really want to thank the Bay Area Council, as well as all the companies that are here, uh, in working with our transportation authority, with our SFMTA, with our mayor, to make sure that we are getting it right. Uh, we're certainly going to learn a lot in the coming months in how we need to do this, and that work will help us better inform how we really, truly grow as a 21st century city. I also want to just make one last note. Uh, I think it is fitting uh, that in this press conference, you have Mayor Lee and Supervisor Wiener and myself. The three of us, along with many of us here, have been working on an effort uh, which this year we will be asking voters uh, to continue to invest more in our city's transportation infrastructure. And I very much want to thank the technology communities uh, and our world's leading companies that are represented here today who are helping us invest in our transit infrastructure. And I know and hope that they'll be working side by side with us this year as we make sure that we are building a transit system for San Francisco, uh, again, through the rest of this century. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you, President Chu. Um, one of the President's colleagues on the board, Supervisor Scott Wiener, um, not only uh, represents a district that has a lot of the people who are benefiting from these services, as well as a lot of people who have concerns about these services, but he's also really become one of the region's strongest voices on transportation issues. He's uh, one of the re city's representatives on the Metropolitan Transportation Commission. Uh, he was actively engaged in the Mayor's 2030 Task Force uh, and has become a, a real advocate for, for Muni and for transportation issues, not scared to take on difficult issues, uh, which th this one uh, certainly fits that bill. So happy to also be joined by Supervisor Scott Wiener. Take this off here. Um, so uh, as uh, Edge has noted, uh, District 8, which is the Castro, Noy Valley, Glen Park, parts of the Mission, uh, some other neighborhoods has uh, really been on, we've been on both sides uh, of this issue. We, there, I have a lot of constituents who rely on these shuttles day in and day out uh, to get to work and they would be really in a world of hurt uh, if these shuttles weren't there in a reliable way. Uh, we also have a lot of shuttles going through our neighborhoods uh, which has caused uh, some concern and some tensions about the, the bus stops and, uh, and some other uh, issues. So I am uh, really thrilled that the MTA is moving forward uh, with a very uh, balanced approach uh, to improving coordination, uh, in moving us towards better coordination, particularly uh, with our bus stops and making sure that the shuttles can use them and we can have cost recovery uh, uh, for the use uh, of, those, uh, of those stops, um, as well as making sure that muni buses can efficiently uh, use them. But looking at the, at the bigger picture, um, we need to stop politicizing people's ability uh, to get to work, because that is really what this is about. Thousands and thousands of San Franciscans, San Francisco residents, some people who just moved here, some people who have lived here for decades, uh, for longer than a lot of us have lived here, thousands of San Franciscans rely on these shuttles to get to work and to earn a livelihood every day and we need to stop politicizing their ability to do that. We need to recognize that people, uh, we have always had many San Francisco residents who have lived in San Francisco and commuted down to the peninsula. That is not a new thing. People have been doing that for decades. In the past, they would get into a car, probably the only person in that car, and drive down the freeway and clog up our city streets and increase congestion on our freeways. Now. 
They're taking buses, which is reducing congestion on our city streets and freeways and reducing pollution. That is exactly what we want in our transit first uh, policy and we need to be encouraging it and making sure that it's done in a well-regulated way. Um, we also, uh, I think, uh, need to stop uh, stereotyping and scapegoating and demonizing people who work in the technology sector and blaming them for the problems in housing and transportation that we have as a city. We have deep, deep problems around housing and transportation in this city because of decades of bad policy that hasn't allowed us to produce enough housing and underinvestment for years in our transportation system. We need to address those problems at their root as a city and work together instead of trying to pretend that one group of San Francisco residents is somehow to blame for those problems. I know that we can work together and address those problems and we can do it in a very, very productive way and I look forward to doing that. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Wiener. Um, so we're talking, when we're talking about these employee shuttles, there's a lot of different companies that are involved. Um, and for, for us as a single entity, as a city agency, uh, to try to uh, negotiate or communicate uh, with literally dozens of, of different organizations uh, is challenging. We, we are uh, happy to have a number of folks here. I just want to acknowledge uh, Mike Watson, the VP of Sales and Marketing from Bowers. We have Susan Gonzalez, Director of Community Engagement from Facebook. We have Dan Weisenhut from Apple. Um, and our, I think we probably have some other folks here. Um, but, but also, as the mayor mentioned, Tilly Chang, the executive director of the County Transportation Authority. A lot of different people have been working together uh, to try to uh, get to some uh, arrangement that would work for San Francisco. Uh, what was most helpful during this process uh, was when the Bay Area Council stepped forward to be a convener to try to convene all of those different private sector interests and provide somewhat of a single point of contact for us to work with. We're extremely grateful to them uh, for stepping forward and very pleased to have the CEO of the Bay Area Council here, Jim Wonderman. Uh, th uh, thank you very much, uh, Ed, and I want to thank uh, Mayor Lee uh, for your tremendous uh, leadership uh, and partnership on this issue, uh, Chairman uh, Nolan, uh, uh, President Chu, Supervisor Wiener, uh, the city team uh, has done a great job uh, not just of being leaders on this but being great partners uh, with us and the companies that have been mentioned and others uh, to pull this together today. I don't think it's a small accomplishment because it is. It's a new issue. As was mentioned, it's a complex issue. But I, I think that the plan that's uh, that will be before the Commission later this month. It's a solid plan. It's a good plan. I really appreciate the comments uh, from Mayor Lee and others. This, these shuttle buses are a tremendous benefit uh, to San Francisco and the region and the companies who rely on them. And they are doing a tremendous job for our streets and roads and for our highways and for our, our air uh, in reducing by tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands uh, the number of cars that would be uh, on our already uh, highly congested roads if we didn't have these shuttle buses. So if we didn't have them, folks would just have to find another way. And that other way would be uh, extremely deleterious to uh, the, the quality of life uh, in this city and in the region. So they, tr uh, they provide a tremendous benefit. They also provide some uh, challenges. And so that's what this is really about is addressing this. Uh, we have a number of the companies who have been involved in this represented, uh, represented today. And you'll hear from a couple. Uh, I saw Apple is here in the room, uh, uh, Genentech, who I think you'll hear from, Facebook, uh, Google, uh, Bowers Intelligent Transportation, who provides uh, a good, you know, good chunk of service, and others who took part in this. These are incredible, world-class companies, uh, innovative companies. I was on an email conversation with someone I actually don't know too well a few weeks ago. He's a friend of a friend from Dublin, not the one in Alameda County, but the one in Ireland, who volunteered for some reason. Uh, that the economy in Dublin was improving and named three of the companies I just named uh, as being the reason because they had set up satellite offices in Dublin, Ireland. And I was just so proud to read that, that our 
Bay Area headquartered companies were responsible for the improvement of an economy uh, in, a, in another part of the world. And you know, Dublin is probably only one example. We need to take great pride in these organizations. They are unique. We are, you know, we, it's not a, not a week that goes by, usually less, when we have a visiting delegation from another part of the world, sometimes another part of the United States, that wants to come by and find out how we do what we do in the Bay Area. Well, these shuttle buses are part of how we do what we do. They're part of the innovation. They're part of making the Bay Area a success. And I'm really proud that the Bay Area Council, an organization that's been around for several generations, was able to pull together these organizations in partnership with the city and work out something that makes sense. It may not solve everything, and as Mayor Lee says, it's a, oh, you know, everything that you do that's good, it's a work in progress. But I think we took a big step forward. I want to thank you know, the key staff members of the council, Adrian Covert, Matt Regan, John Grubb, who worked you know, very closely with these companies uh, over the course of about a year uh, with the city uh, to come up with this very, very uh, fair proposal. It's going to bring a lot of money into city coffers to help oversee and administrate this program. Uh, it's going to make uh, th the city able to properly oversee this with the proper data uh, and exert the proper level of authority uh, to make sure that we, don't, uh, th that we don't do too much too soon and that we do the proper things, 200 stops, muni stops around the city uh, where folks n know that they can get a shuttle and get down to the peninsula in Silicon Valley and get to work and get home safely and for sure uh, not think about the alternative is to get in a car and drive and create all of that additional greenhouse gas and pollution and congestion. That's what we uh, need to avoid. So uh, again, I want to thank, uh, I want to thank uh, all of you who participated in this. You know, the council goes back to a time, we were the group that founded BART back in the 1950s. We're really proud of that. Uh, those are the big kind of things that sometimes the business community can and should lead on. Uh, more recently, in recent generations, if you see big, big multifamily housing developments around BART stations and other major transportation, not only in San Francisco but in the suburbs, that was something that the Bay Area Council created and advocated strongly for, sometimes not easy uh, easily done with some uh, suburban cities uh, that didn't want to have that. But that's all helping. It's all part of the solution of having a region that can function and can stay ahead of the pack. So we're really pleased with San Francisco's leadership on this. And Mayor, you've been doing a tremendous job for this city's economy. When he became mayor, he had an unemployment rate that was up near 9%. It's about half of that now. And everybody's asking, how is San Francisco doing what it's doing? Well. Uh, you can see how it's doing what it's doing. So thank you very much, and we look forward to continued uh, work together. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. Uh, and Jim will be uh, available for a Q&A after to answer questions kind of on behalf of the companies, but we also want to give you an opportunity to hear directly uh, from a couple of them. Uh, so uh, first, want to bring up Carlo Barano, the Vice President of Site Services at Genentech. Good afternoon and thank you. And a special thanks to Mayor Lee and Chairman Nolan for inviting us to be here today uh, to speak about this. Sure, it's B-O-R-A-G-N-O. -O. First name's Carla. Okay. With a C, yes, okay. So we actually are really excited about this program uh, today. We've been working with SFMTA over the past year to really find ways to uh, meet uh, this challenge of finding ways to get our employees to our campus in South San Francisco and do it in a way that really uh, supports the goals of San Francisco and SFMTA and that actually works in complement with the public transportation. So our program started in 2006 and the primary goal of our program was to encourage employees to stop driving to work by themselves alone in their car. And we're really happy to say that over the past six, seven years, uh, we've had great success in that program, and we've actually eliminated over five million car trips off of the road. And our employees also take BART, Caltrain, Muni, and the ferry that connect up with our shuttles to get them to our offices in South San Francisco. So not only does this help get to our, employee, our employees get to work, but it significantly reduces traffic through San Francisco and the communities, as well as reducing our carbon emissions. So as I mentioned earlier, we've really enjoyed a strong partnership and collaboration with SFMTA, and uh, we're very hopeful that this new program will really um, move us uh, forward. Thank you. 
Thank you. And while um, you can see there's a lot of different companies that, that have been a part of this. Um, so while a lot of, the, a lot of people refer uh, to this phenomenon as Google buses, uh, Google is just one of the many companies, but like everything else they do, they, they are one of the larger ones. So we're also happy to have Google here. Uh, we have Veronica Bell, who's the manager of public policy and government affairs for Google. Thank you. Um, I'd like to start out by thanking uh, all the folks involved in moving this important project forward for the city. Uh, thank you to Mayor Lee, Director Riskin, and everyone else here today who's worked on this. Um, Google is really excited to be working with you and the Bay Area Council and members of the community on our shared goal of efficient transportation around the Bay Area. We see this pilot program as a good first step towards better integration and partnership in the months ahead. I have to say, as a San Francisco native and a current city resident, I really appreciate all the work that's gone into making a better and more cohesive transportation system around San Francisco and across the Bay Area, and I, you have the folks in this room to thank for that, so thank you. Okay, so before we open it up to questions, I do, I do just want to acknowledge uh, the woman who has really been our point person who has spearheaded all of the work to pull this together. Uh, working with <clears throat> the folks at Muni, with our traffic engineers, our IT people, with all of the different uh, providers, the, the transportation companies, the companies that, that they're working for, the Bay Area Council, and that's our transportation demand manager, Carly Payne. So thanks to Carly. <clears throat> uh, she's, she's the brains behind all this. And now uh, we're available for questions. Jim Wonderman is here to answer questions for the companies, the mayor and I, Director Nolan. Okay, there's a whole lot of questions there. So, so the, the basic idea here is uh, that what, what we have, uh, we the, the city and the transportation system have that the providers want is access to muni bus stops. Um, so what the permit would do would be to permit someone to use a muni bus stop. Currently, of course, only muni buses are legally allowed to use muni bus stops. So the permit uh, would, would designate a certain uh, limited number of muni bus stops uh, for use by permitted providers um, and would subject them to uh, kind of a number of, uh, a number of constraints or requirements such as providing data, such as uh, not dwelling too long, such as not interfering with muni, such as staying off of certain streets, uh, and most importantly, uh, not using all the, the rest of the more than 2,000 muni bus stops. So that's what the permit would provide. It, it's a, a dollar per stop per day is the figure. What And the way we did that, we uh, are governed by Prop 218 um, such that we can only recover uh, our costs to administer the program. We can't generate profit uh, from any fee that, that we do. Uh, only the voters of San Francisco can enact a tax that, that generates excess revenue. So what we did was we identified what it would cost us to develop and run an 18-month pilot, uh, which would, is about $1.5 million. And from that, we then backed out based on what we expect the demand to be, based on the data we have, the, the dollar per day per stop figure. So if you don't want to get a permit and you don't use bus stops, do you have to have one? No. And, and just the, I get the other thing was how many seats? What, what constitutes the shuttle? Uh, we don't have, uh, I don't think we have a, if you, if you want to use our bus stops, you need to be part of this permit program. And once we have this permit program in place, we will be enforcing uh, against anyone using bus stops without a permit or using bus stops that are not part of the program. Yeah, so I. That's correct. It's a $1.5 million uh, anticipated revenues over the course of the 18-month pilot. Uh, the $100,000 figure is, uh, I think, about the average per company, but some companies are very large. Some companies are very small in terms of how many stops they have. 
But uh, that 1.5 million will just pay the cost of administering, of developing, and then administering the program. Can you talk a little bit about like, the impact that the buses, that these commuter buses have had on community service? I mean, are, is it, yeah. yeah the, so the, the buses, the, the question is what's the impact been on muni services? Um, th you know, they're large vehicles, and there are certainly times, and those of us who ride muni have experienced this, uh, the folks that are managing the service. Uh, know this, we hear it from our operators, that sometimes these buses are delaying Muni from being able to get to a stop, offload, board passengers, and move on. So the, the, the dwell time, these vehicles tend to dwell longer at stops. We've done a lot of data collection to try to understand that. But the basic issue is that um, some of the busiest Muni stops are also the places where they want to be. And that can create conflicts, which delays Muni service. And that's one of the main things um, that we're trying to solve with this program. Will the funding also go to increase enforcement? And how much extra enforcement will Yeah, the, the part of the 1.5 million, and I don't have the breakdown with me, but part of that is for the enforcement, because obviously this will only work if it's enforced. How many companies are we talking about that will participate in this program? Carly Payne. Hi. Sure. Carly Payne, C A R L I P A I N E. So the question was how many companies have participated? And I'd say we have about three dozen companies, but that's a mix between employers and properties that provide the service to their employees and the transportation service providers like Bowers and Compass, who many of them contract out for. So there's an overlap within that 36. And that's included in that. Mm -hmm. Academy of Art, UCSF, there's some medical institutions as well. It, it'll be whoever the permittee is. In most cases, it will probably be the transportation provider uh, because it's, it's really their buses and their operators. Uh, but it's ultimately, it'll be wh whomever uh, wants to gain access and chooses to be the permittee. Why you couldn't ask for more money? So the state law, based on Prop 218 and then I think subsequently Prop 26, uh, restricts uh, any local government uh, from collecting fees an amount greater than it costs to administer uh, the program that the fees support. So it's just it's uh, it's state law. The only way to raise revenue beyond that is to go to the voters and uh, to get approval for a tax increase. I don't think we have that information. Uh, the part, one of the, I didn't really mention this, uh, you know, one of the reasons we're doing a pilot and one of the important benefits of a pilot will be to gather that kind of information. So we'll be requiring uh, a pretty significant uh, data gathering component to this so that we really can understand the dynamics of, of how many people are moving and from where. Uh, probably not building new stops, but signage and, and other things at the stops to make it clear which stops are uh, available. If there are any stops that, you know, I don't know, maybe need a bigger bus shelter. I mean, it's possible. I don't think we know yet what those improvements might be. Maybe for the mayor, you, have, you mentioned the symbolic, you know, significance that these buses have taken on. You also have general displeasure with Muni just on the whole. Do you think this agreement disarms some of that? Well, I, I think it lends a uh, kind of legitimate role of the commuter shuttles to our transportation system. I think that's being recognized by transportation experts, certainly by uh, the company's Bay Area Council. And I think uh, we didn't want them to be the symbols of something else. They, they should be what they really are. They're getting people to work, uh, to work and back from work safely, and they're preventing thousands of cars from getting on the road. Uh, they're really reducing the carbon emissions, which I think is incredibly important. Uh, but they are transporting people to work, and that's really the essence of uh, this conversation. And we need to get people to work, and that's part of our whole transportation system. So how do we make sure it complements our muni system rather than 
brushes up against it to create more challenges, safety challenges, and others. And that's why I think this pilot will give us a lot more information. But I really think the great part of it is the collaboration and cooperation we'll get from the companies whose employees ride and the companies who provide the service. They're going to start discussing with us officially uh, what these challenges are on a, on a zone by zone basis and how they can improve the safety and, and reliability and efficiency of the whole system. Well, we could possibly suffer that if we imposed it on them. And I think this is where that level of collaboration, talking with businesses so that they know there's a challenge for them as well, and they want to not be in the front of a muni bus is trying to pick up people. They want to be uh, coordinating schedules as good as possible. Uh, they don't want to challenge uh, very clear congested areas of forcing a bike rider into the lane when they don't have to and shouldn't have to and they want to know who else wants to coordinate with us. Just the clarification of who wants to be in agreement with us as opposed to people who just want to do their own thing will cause a lot of confusion for everybody. I think this is a great attempt to really coordinate something that's not been coordinated for a long, long time. And if we don't do it in a collaborative way, we will have those challenges. And by God, safety is our number one issue. Using a muni zone in coordination with our very challenged municipal system that has been succeeding over the years, but now we have a whole, I think, plan to get them even more resources, I think it's uh, a privilege to kind of use the same spaces in a coordinated way. How do we do that? And we're not talking about a tax. We're just simply recovering the costs of getting a system that they've agreed with us would be a better system than the helter skelter that might occur, that is occurring without any coordination. <laughs> we'll be available for questions after. Thank you. Go Niners. Yeah.